at Southeast Game Exchange. So happy to be here. This is the best time to pick up deals. This is when vendors are still setting up, and thankfully I'm vending here, so I can walk around and try to find some games. The first purchase of the convention, guys. It's not anything super insane, but I just needed this game for my personal collection. And you know I'm going for CIB and ES, so this is actually from my friend David here. Thank you so much, David. He worked out a great price on this really nice condition, Tiny Toon Adventures. It has every single piece of paperwork in there. I could tell, David, did this come from your personal collection? Uh, yes, I can't actually can't remember when I picked that up. It's been years ago. I could, I could tell by just like the, when the condition that it's in and how yeah. complete it is, like each, the manual and the paperwork are in like separate bags that you, you know, you yourself put that in there. So dude, thank you so much for the deal. Yeah, I can tell man. So thank you so much for the price. Thank you. Thank yeah. So another NES game to check off the box. I'm here with Adam from Upstate Games. Adam, what do you have for me there? Popeye the Sailor Man. And that is a minty Sailor Man right there. Even Olive Oil would be proud of that. Oh, Popeye, how wonderful. Thank you so much, man. Worked out a great deal. Adam, thank you so much, man. Of course, anytime. Absolutely my favorite purchase so far. This is the last one I'm gonna get to do before the vendor hall closes, but guys, check this out. We got a money counting Jeffrey right here because I just paid Jeffrey all the cash that I had for Jeffrey himself. So, guys, incredible. <laughs> Make it rain, Jeffrey. <laughs> but dude, in all seriousness, Ryan, Thank you so much, well, man. Okay. Incredible you purchase, dude. Got a new home. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, man. Please, boys, these are some of my favorite guys in the YouTube scene, man. Game scene, everything. Well, that's a mistake. Yeah. Bad choices, guys. <laughs> I need to make better live choices, choices guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with my good buddy, Warren. And my good buddy, guy. Travis. I love this guy. He so. likes mutual. You're dead. <laughs> the built in gimbal. That's going to be the intro right there. So, y'all are here at my booth. What are you browsing some NES games? I'm going heavy NES. Yeah? I, I wouldn't say heavy, but like that, like, $70, $80 range. Gotcha, yeah. The higher heat, but not the crazy. Right, right. Well, I definitely have a, an eclectic mix because, you know, I'm also a uh, CIB NES collector, so all the all the leftover loose ones end up here. And at so. the last expo, I did the same. I went to your booth and picked up like five $90 games. Yeah. Like, okay, okay, okay. So, you know, yep. so you take my money. Same as them, 30% extra as always. You know how it is. I gotta, oh. I gotta give you the dusty treatment here. Oh yeah, you need to wax him. Oh. Wax red. Thanks man, see ya. Let's let these boys start okay. looking at do some game. NES games. Oh, this is my favorite NES game of all time. Yeah, there you oh, go. So good. Dude. Really, really good game by Comerica. This game is my favorite Ninja Turtle action Oh, dude, player. yeah. Great action Have figure. you played this NES pinball game? Honestly. Oh, it's so good, My brother dude. grew up playing that with Michael Jackson uh, yeah. and the <laughs> Neverland Ranch bedroom. Right. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Uh, great, great convention. I typically always have the, like I've been here, and so I always have the uh, expectation of making a lot of money, but then spending literally all of it every single time, and it happens every time. It's like, if I if I sell eight grand, I spend eight grand. That's just what happens. That's so. just what, that's how it works. Because <laughs> yeah. there's well, stuff that you're not going to find yes. anywhere. Yeah, unless so. you're like hunting on eBay constantly and, yeah. you know, yeah, but I get it, I get it. Yet again, two more NES games. I actually have these games, but just the condition of them, I just couldn't pass it up. And so, Justin, two D's game? That is correct. Perfect, man. We're remembering names. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The condition on these are just the way I like them. Original HC plastic. I opened them up earlier. They're still in bags, just as mint as you can be. Gave me a great bundle deal, 70 bucks all in. Look, even comes with a two dudes gaming bag. How can you beat it? I don't know. <laughs> but just, you can check this out too. Yeah, two dudes gaming. So Justin, thank you so much, man. Thank you. I'm here with 
my buddy James, otherwise known as Big Old Words. Guys, if you've never seen this guy's channel, please check it out. His content is amazing. He's kind of hyper-focused on NES games. I'm like very hyper-focused on NES games. He's got a full yeah. set. It's great content. So funny. Oh, I almost forgot the best part. Dragon Spirit has a smutty cutscene. In the Japanese Famicom version, after you beat the last boss, if you press select 20 times, 20, the girl's skirt will flip up. Wow. That's pretty insane. <laughs> Check out the dragon's expression. That's perfect. Here with my good buddy, who I actually met on Chase After the Right Prices Whatnot, and we somehow <laughs> ran into each other at a convention, and I was talking about a w Chase's Whatnot, and this guy was like, I was there! And I was like, what is your username? And it is? Drug Man. <laughs> or, or Dr. Ugman. Dr. Ugman is what it's always called in the stream, and so... That has spread around, by the way. If I go to another I'm channel, shopping. I'm always Dr. Yeah, Ugman, <laughs> which is cool. I'm cool with it. That's an awesome name. So what do you got? I got this awesome tail stick. Awesome, man. An amazing sculpt, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I really dig it. It's super awesome. You know, it's going to go like in the, the, the high shelf of my game. Excellent, man. That means so much. I love hearing that when people add these statues to their collection. Like. It is so awesome. So thank you so much. Absolutely, for the dude. Absolutely, man. Are, are you gonna be at the uh, Southern Fight Gaming Expo? Yeah, I'll be there too. All right, man. Well, I'll see you there. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Are you recording on wrist camera too? Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. How's it going, man? <laughs> we just Jared. Who are you? Uh, for Rick? No. Are you serious? Dude! I, I you're thought you're joking. No, no, no. Yeah. I thought your brother just got paid naked. Oh, yeah. He, he, <laughs> I mean, if you, if, you call what, if you call what Jared does, that it is. Not even a hawk on dude. that guy, dude. <laughs> Take out my leg, why don't dude, you? Dude, he uses iMovie, bro. He just, like, smashes clips together. I'm, I'm moving. Bro, yeah. drives in rail. There's no way, dude. dude. He almost took me out right there. <laughs> oh, that's uh, 40 and yes, we've got five. <laughs> well, I got out of here. Uh, speaking of deals, what kind of deals are you looking for today? So the channel on uh, my channel decided that I'm going Genesis. Oh. Well, Sega. So I'm going Genesis today. All right. All so right. I've already got my first one. Okay. First one ever for a Genesis game. Dang. For me, all right. So that's cool, what I'm going for. What, what game was it? Well, I'll, I, got, I'll let... I got Aladdin, but ah, okay. you can jump over and check mine out. All right, so I'm at Southeast Scam Exchange. Siege, we're going to see what we can find. Don't go now. Wait till the end. And then go retention. <laughs> Aladdin is an amazing game. It is, yeah. It came out on both systems, yeah. SNES and uh, Genesis, but the Genesis one is considered the better one, even though Capcom created the one on SNES. Yeah. Genesis had, uh, do you know this Genesis? I know had, a little bit, yeah. I did have, I had the Game Gear Aladdin. So they so. had access to um, the animation cells at Disney. Oh, wow. And so that's why their sprites look so clean. Over 30 animators were enlisted to the Aladdin game, some of whom had actually contributed to the feature film. The Disney artists were tasked with creating modules of motion, short sequences that could be assigned to specific action. I've seen NWC, complete and box stadium events, some crazy like not for resale and demo cartridges and all sorts of signs and kiosks and all that kind of stuff, which we all love. So there is definitely something here for everyone. But so James, this is your first game convention ever, right? It's technically the first one I've attended as a guest. I've okay. been to a couple. Okay. Um, for some reason it feels more intimidating because I'm here as a guest, like I'm supposed to be doing something you're but working. I, you're on the I'm not doing anything no one what I've realized is like no one knows they're just here for the game so <laughs> I need to just relax and have fun yeah 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 so this is your first time coming to Southeast Game Exchange second time actually second time. yeah okay. so I came here with two of my buddies for my 40th birthday we came just awesome. mostly to get <laughs> up in Greenville so it's a little <laughs> different than this we kind of went for a couple hours and then we just hung out but this I, I came by myself to kind of spend the whole day and like really absorb it so so definitely the coolest NES CIBs I've picked up so far at the convention, and definitely the most expensive, and probably some of the better condition games as well. And it's not surprising that it comes from 
my good buddy Scott Squatch. Wow. Who hooked me up with NES games last time at Game Jam South. So I like this tradition, but I don't know how much longer it's going to last because I don't know how many more rare or really, really clean NES games I have at home anymore. But. <laughs> well, I'll probably continue to buy you out until it's just completely exhausted. Good, I like that. Yeah. So what do you got for me today, Scott? So we got some Joes. Both NES GI Joe games. Super clean. Very, very clean. This one little freaking little mark is like the only bummer, but it stands out anyway. So yeah, clean GI Joes on the NES. A gun neck, complete in box. Really clean as well. And then this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was part of the deal. This was one, this one little, there's always like that one little bit that's left over where it's like, ah, all right, we'll throw them another one. So, dude, yep. always a great price, always a great deal, always a pleasure to work with. So, Scott, yeah. thank you so much for the deal, man. It's not like a slogan for a restaurant or something. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> Enjoy. Eat at Scott's Restaurant, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> the full set of NES stuff so remind me again what you're what huh? you're picking out today so I've got a few random bootleg ones we got crazy creatures got some king of kings the early years and got some tubing oh, yeah. for extreme fun and then I am picking up this metal fighter good old color greens I have never played this before it has uh, I think a deceptive name like it sounds like it's gonna be really good but you know it's gonna be wider. pretty horrible but we gonna see that on a stream soon no yeah. <laughs> I should at some point just stream like all these cuz you can't play them for more than like three minutes but, um, dude I swear if you end up playing that and then making a video you, out of I it, probably will yeah. play some metal player I've tried to stay away from the like um, unlicensed stuff cuz it's like it's low-hanging fruit. It's yeah. very easy to make fun of, but sometimes they're kind of interesting, so we'll see. Oh, cool. James, yeah. I'm so glad I Thanks, could add Blair. to the uh, the chaos that is your NES collection right yeah, now. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Gosh, uh, immenseness. Are you, are, you, are you overwhelmed right now? Absolutely. First game convention ever, right? Yeah, ever. All right, so what, what are we on the lookout for? Uh, today, I want to cheat. Well... If I could find a Shadowgate, a Nightshade, and an Uninvited right. in one sitting. CIB, right? That, oh, yeah. Nice condition. All right. Squeaky clean. The more cherry, the better. Cool, man. Let's um, uh, let's walk around and see if we can find this. Yeah, dude. Let's All rock. Right. Let's go. Let's go. So, Josh, what did we just stumble upon just now? We found a Nightshade. And not just a Nightshade. A really cherry dude. Nightshade. Dude, yeah. <laughs> We hit the jackpot on this one. Still an original H-seam plastic. Open that up, let's take a look at it. Does it have the bag? Oh Ooh, yeah, it sure yeah. does, sure does, man. So, seal the deal, how much did we get for it, Josh? We got it for 80. 80 bucks, man, what a killer deal. This came from uh, Upstate Games. I've already bought stuff from them already, but just keep giving out the deals. You excited about that, Josh? I'm oh, stoked. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name's Adam Prager. Um, I collect NWC stuff. I've been doing it for about 12 to 15 years now. When the NWC went off, I don't know the exact reason and why the parents got upset, but all of the other 87 kids that didn't win got left with nothing. They didn't get anything. So I guess the parents got upset. Something happened where they contacted Howard Phillips. And Howard Phillips was pretty much in charge of a lot of the media and advertising and things that had to do with NWC. And they complained to him and they're like, we didn't get anything. And that's actually where the cartridges came from. They took the cartridges at Corporate Nintendo of America and they sent one to every single finalist after the event. It wasn't something that was given to them at the event. And along with the cartridge that was sent to them in the mail, this VHS came. And this VHS, you can see, it's uploaded on YouTube. Every finalist got one of these, and it's basically just like a professional video, a recap of the entire NWC. Identical screens as they come tearing out to the same timing. Unbelievably close, we've never had a tie, but if There's only like two or three of these known still to exist, but it's been um, transferred over digitally. Out of the 90 finalists, I've probably talked to like 30 of them, yeah. maybe like 40 of them. <laughs> And so you kind of, you get different stories from different people and you kind of have to try to piece together the way it is, the way it's supposed to be. So, you know, with NWC, everything's not fact, really. It's like a game of telephone. And then we pick what's logical and what's not, you know. 
Like there's some items here that are not documented. When I go and look for these items, we have things like uh, like this particular picture right here. People like me will go and look for old footage of the NWC, and we will look for that banner. We will look for those banners. We will look for things that are hanging at the event to prove that they're actual NWC items. So, you know, we have items like the jumpsuit over here. The jumpsuit you can totally see in many staff videos, many production videos. It's all over the place. The orange or the yellow shirt. That's a finalist shirt. You see those all over the place. You know, it's, it's in fitted photo, video. There's one picture with the three winners, um, and they're each wearing their colored shirt standing with Howard Phillips with a big banner behind it. But then you have an item like that PowerFest US tour jacket. We know it's real. We can like, so carbon date it. You know, you can tell looking at clothing if it's vintage or if it's new, you know, by looking at the tags, the, the thread count, you know, all that kind of thing. But we've never seen that in a photo before. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that we do with NWC, it's, it's a lot of trial and error and guessing game, you know? Like when I bought that jacket, had we known it was a real jacket? No, but logically, we figured out it's real, but we have no proof still. You know, we don't have a picture of someone wearing it to know that it's actually a real item. When it comes to like the badges, you know, each badge is used for different things. Some are used for, for uh, well, you know, your fi you got your finalist badge, the travel companion that went with them, but then you have, you know, sponsors would get that badge. Or if you were working in production, you'd have working crew badges. And over the so many years that I've done this, by process of elimination, I've come up with that there's 14 different badges. I have 13 out of the 14 that I've known are out there, and I don't think there are any more. So that that's a really big accomplishment. I've, it's taken me a lot of time to get the badges. So my last chrome tail statue is being sold to my good buddy Daryl here. Daryl, thank you so much for the support, man. Yeah, thank you. People say this in every convention video. Well, it was so great. It really was great. The vibe at Siege is very much like a family reunion. It's like yeah. a, it's like a summer camp uh, that you go to and you like become best friends with everybody and then you have to go home at the end. <laughs> it's yeah. very much that yeah. feeling here. Well, Mort, thank you so much, man. I can't wait to see you again, buddy. Very soon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in total, I actually picked up eight. NES CIB games. I do have all of these either loose, missing a component, or just a condition upgrade. Like for example, I did have Ultima loose, but that was a CIB I picked up. I was missing the manual to this GI Joe that I picked up from Scott, but man, the condition on this one is better than mine. I had other GI Joe uh, Atlantis Factor uh, loose. Gunnack, I had loose. So Super Off-Road and Knight Rider that I picked up from Two Dudes Gaming. I did have both of these CIB. It may, I think I was missing the manuals of Knight Rider, but just the condition of these, just incredible. Both in H-Seam, both bagged games. Uh, you saw me pick this up from Upstate Games, Popeye. I had this one loose, but man, this is a great example. This is a three screw, no hang tab on the back, but I feel like you just rarely see black box games in H-Seam plastic, and so I had to, had to pick this up. And then I've been looking for a nice condition Tiny Tunes uh, for a while now. I did have this loose, but for some reason it's hard to find a, uh, a nice condition copy of this. And so I don't know why, but great underrated game. So off camera, Aaron over at Pixel Game Squad was nice enough to share his wealth with these holy items that he picked up from another person at Walking Around Siege. I actually needed this King of Kings manual. And if you look close, you can actually see the cut lines of how horribly this was cut, the dotted line still on it. Um, and also these two unused labels for Spiritual Warfare for the NES and the Sega Genesis. This is by far Wisdom Tree's best game, probably Color Dreams as well, but this was my favorite piece of this little lot right here. This was just a like employee folder for Wisdom Tree. Just so cool. So the only game I bought off camera was this Super Nintendo Super Bomberman Big Box, the one that comes with the Hudson Soft Multi-Tap. 
I had this loose, but it's actually hard to find uh, this big box. Even though the small box is more rare, I just think this one's really cool. One, because this was the last big box game I needed CIB for the Super Nintendo. I do have Earthbound complete in box and both Mario Paint Player's Choice and regular versions. But what made that transaction special was that I worked out in the deal this sign that is a metal original Mario Repair Center sign. You can still see the overprint on the back, but also if you can see right there, it's actually embossed too. And the condition of this is incredible. So just such a cool deal with this seller that he was also vending at the convention. So by far my favorite item I picked up at Siege was this super rare M40A World of Nintendo sign. This is otherwise known as the clover or mushroom sign based on the shape at the top. This is a vacuum form sign that has the same graphic printed on the back. You rarely see these and especially in this condition. This vacuum form plastic likes to pick up cracks and creases but this, was an, this is a great example of the sign that still exists. And when you did see them back in the day, you would see them hanging most likely, like this one right here, as you can see in the World of Nintendo book. But just what a great item to pick up. It came from the same uh, vendor that sold me the Mario sign, but by far my favorite item I picked up over the weekend. What a great convention that was. Southeast Game Exchange is always one of my favorites and I think the items I picked up speak for themselves. If you enjoyed the video, I'll link another one similar to the greatest convention of all time, SoCal, as well as the making of tail statues that I have for sale at my booth. And as always, I'll see you at the next one.